Thank you, Purvi. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement. They keep us going. That she was my partner. ठीक, ओके। इतने चेंज नहीं होते का? होते ना? ओके, गुड। So, as a disclaimer, this is a talk which is brought to us and sponsored by Novartis. We are going to talk about this molecule because. Uh, not because this is the most or the first line therapy that is uh, preferred today. We'll talk, we have, uh, as we have been discussing since morning about SGLT2 inhibitors, GLP-1 analogs, and uh, the newer molecules. But we are going to talk about how science has made a difference uh, in patients with management, uh, uh, through the management of patients with type 2 diabetes. So we are going to talk about this age-old molecule Particularly so now because in last few years this uh, has been a molecule which has got off patent and is available at a very, very affordable cost to patients to control their HbA1c. And we are going to talk, to, uh, talk about this from the scientific point of view as to how anti-diabetes therapy has changed the scenario. In spite of having SGLT2 inhibitors, GLP-1 analogs, sulfonylureas, metformin and various uh, a basket of different types of insulins that we have, we all know that still there are many patients whose HbA1c doesn't get control to the target. So any molecule in the armamentarium of management of type 2 diabetes is useful. And this is a reminder that in spite of having the new molecules, we should not forget the science and usefulness of the molecules that have, that are there with us for a long time. So this is a reminder about the science of developing anti-diabetes therapy, Vildagliptin as a representative of the pioneering of anti-diabetes therapy since a long time, maybe uh, around two decades. So we are going to uh, have a, a, a word about expanding armamentarium of oral antihyperglycemic agents. The incretin story, we all know this, but we, uh, I thought it will be a good podium now to revise on these things. The Wildagliptin as pioneer of all the gliptins, uh, the PKPD studies, what they taught us about diabetes and its uh, therapy. Uh, how Wildagliptin do uh, in comparison with other DPP-4 inhibitors and is there anything that it provides beyond glycemic control? So we, uh, we don't need to uh, be told about how diabetes is a problem, especially uh, in our country and how Management of diabetes needs to be as simplified as possible, as less uh, harmful as possible, and as easy as possible. Specifically from the point of view of therapy, from the telemedicine uh, treatment point of view during the COVID era, there was a very strong uh, need of having medications which will not cause any side effects. In the afternoon we were talking, we require drugs that we can give and close our eyes to. And I think Wildagliptin along with metformin has been a combination which we could give and we could close our eyes if the HbA1c reduction uh, potential of HB, uh, Wildagliptin metformin was matching to our target. And this is, I think, one of the medication that will be useful to the epidemiology of diabetes in India because this is a molecule which can be given to people who might not come for follow-up, who might not show up if there is any complication, who might not even understand what is happening to them is probably because as a com complication of a drug that they are taking. So if there is a drug which will match the epidemiology of India, especially rural India now having this molecule into, um, into the reasonable category of cost, a molecule that you can give and close your eyes to, uh, this might be a very useful combination. Now, um, we know that India's epidemiological warrants different uh, aspects to be considered compared to the Western world or people from uh, people where the third party is covering their, uh, their treatment expenses. Coming to expanding the armamentarium of oral anti-diabetes medication, we have around 60 unique anti-hyperglycemic drugs since 1982, since the time when anti-diabetes therapy uh, was limelighted after the invention or discovery of human insulin. We have around 36 molecules as monotherapy 
and 23 unique drug combinations. It started from insulin, then we had sulfonylurea, bigonides, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. DPP-4 and GLP-1, as we saw, are the newest and one of the most evidence-based molecules, SGLT2 inhibitors, megalitinides. Then we have combinations of all of this with each other. Of course, of one class with the other, not two molecules of the same class. So including these 60 molecules also, we find it so difficult sometimes to make the patient come to its, his target HbA1c. Coming to the incretin uh, in story, in 1930, though the word incretin was coined, the insulinotropic action of incretins was confirmed somewhere in 1970. Now, this insulinotropic action of incretin was really incredible at that time when it came up. And what it showed was that the insulinotropic action of oral glucose is totally different than the insulinotropic action of IV glucose. The insulin secretion that is induced by oral glucose is mediated through an effect called as incretin effect, that is incretins that are secreted in our small and large GI, especially the GLP-1, which was considered as one of the most potent incretin in human body. And that is what uh, uh, generated a lot of research, a lot of science, that there is something that happens in the gastrointestinal tract. I think that would be the beginning of the gut-brain axis that we uh, understand today as a driver of something that is we always thought happens at pancreas. So the incretin effect was one of the most important discovery uh, when it comes to our understanding of how glucose uh, uh, functions in the body. So the effect of insulin secretion or insulinotropic action of glucose through gut is totally different than when we give the glucose through the intravenous system. And this effect was very important to understand. It we, uh, we came to know about it somewhere in 1970, I, immediately after which GLP-1 was discovered. And then we also discovered that this GLP-1 was very um, rapidly getting disintegrated by an enzyme called dipeptidyl peptidase 4 or DPP-4. And then a wonderful thought of inhibiting DPP-4 inhibition to increase the GLP-1 action came into picture and then where, that is where uh, the Vildagliptin was pioneered in somewhere between 1998 uh, to 2000. And that is why we, that is how we had the incredible uh, aspect of incretin into the antihyperglycemic armamentorium. So uh, this was probably the times when uh, the pharmaceutical market was not investing as much as they are investing now into the anti-diabetes spectrum of the pharmacology. And that is why I think at that point of time it was incredible that there was uh, a science which was um, promoted and this is how the incretin was taken ahead and clinical trials began and Vildagliptin was uh, pioneered. Now look at the structure of different gliptins. This is vildagliptin, saxagliptin, sitagliptin, and lenagliptin. On first glance, you can say that it doesn't look anything, one molecule doesn't look like anything with the other. The structure is totally different. The molecular composition is totally different. Most likely their clinical effects are not very different. Most of the uh, gliptins have similar fashion, even though there is a huge difference between their molecular structure, their um, DPP-4 inhibition, their half-life, their duration of action is so different, but probably the clinical effect is not very different. So this also is a very interesting thing uh, that I would like to spend a moment on how the name Vildagliptin came in. So Will was taken from Wilhar who uh, invented this molecule. DAP, that is dipeptidyl, uh, dipeptidyl aminopeptidase. GLI is a short form of, or, or a suffix that is uh, compulsorily to be included as advised by WHO 
to any molecule which acts through the glucose and the insulin effect. So you see glimepiride, glycolazide, you see gliflozins, you see gliptins, anything that acts on a glucose and insulin axis will have its name uh, somewhere uh, impregnated with GLI, GLI, and dentin is an enzyme inhibitor. So the name Vildagliptin comes from there. So pharma if we compare pharmacokinetic profile of gliptin, as I said, the uh, chemistry-wise, they are either peptide or non-peptide. Uh, the older gliptins like cetagliptin, wildagliptin, uh, sorry, cetagliptin and uh, the newer one, linagliptin, these are non-metabolizing uh, gliptins. So they do not change much uh, after ingestion, while wildagliptin, uh, hepatically hydrolyzed in inactive metabolite, metabolize, uh, metabolite and then gets excreted. So whenever we are dealing with renal impairment, we need to reduce the dose of these molecules accordingly to avoid their metabolic dumping inside the body. Again, as I said, there is a huge difference between the dosing, the compounds half-life, the DPP-4 inhibitions, and drug interaction. Saxagliptin possibly is a, a molecule which is failing at many levels. Uh, thankfully, I don't think we have a lot of use of saxagliptin in our country. We do not have uh, availability of saxagliptin very commonly. But rest of the gliptin, even though they uh, differ, the dosing differs, the compound half-life differs, the clinical efficacy remains uh, similar to each other, and that is what we are going to see when it comes to uh, achieving the HbA1c. Uh, overall, as a class, the gliptin reduce HbA1c by somewhere around 0.6 to 0.7. There are some trials or some evidence that says that the DPP4, um, the GLP1 defect in Asians is more compared to the GLP1 defects in Caucasians and possibly the incretin-based therapies will work better in Asians compared to non-Asians. So that is a point that we can consider. Secondly, if we are starting patients with a very high HbA1c at baseline, the HbA1c reduction can come down to a larger extent than more than 0.6. Believe me or not, I have seen patients who combine lifestyle modification with a combination therapy like metformin wildagliptin having reduction of HbA1c of any level. And this is a lifestyle modification that is bringing down the HbA1c. And why uh, gliptin and metformin combination? Because probably it will not cause undue side effects that will uh, deal uh, harmfully with my lifestyle modifications. So if I need a molecule which will give some reduction of HbA1c but still not interfere with the lifestyle modifications, the combination can bring down HbA1c from anywhere between 0.6 to 2.5%. So if you want a safer molecule and you want to give a very strong lifestyle intervention, this is a good option. So comparing one molecule with the other in the uh, gliptin class possibly results in uh, uh, a result that shows that they are similar to each other. So looking beyond glycemic control, this is though extrapolated as an effect of GLP-1, theoretically when we are suppressing DPP-4, we probably are potentiating the endogenous GLP-1 and we might get, even though there are no strong evidences to suggest it, we might get effectivity at, a, at various levels because the GLP-1 receptors are present in various organs in the body. So we might get additional benefits. We uh, know that the SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1s have added benefit to heart failure as well as cardiovascular risk reduction. But apart from that, if we are using a molecule, we at least need to know that they are safe. So it, unless saxagliptin, which has been shown to have harmful effects in cases with heart failure, wildagliptin is considered safe. It does not increase the heart failure or the MACE outcomes compared to other uh, anti-diabetes therapy, not associated with increased CV compared to other non-insulin anti-diabetes therapy. And even in renal impairment patient, now the trials are coming that with a reduced dose you can safely use. It is not only safe, but it will also have least amount of side effects like hypoglycemia. So in summary, even though we have newer 
uh, molecules like SGLT2 and GLP1. What we need to give, give credit to is the science behind these pioneering molecules that has improved our understanding about type 2 diabetes, especially the incretin axis of molecules. Uh, we do acknowledge vildagliptin as one of the important uh, molecule in the armamentarium, especially when it comes to safety as an add-on to intensive lifestyle modifications. And though not uh, from the pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic point of view, the gliptins are very different from each other. With that, I would like to thank these sponsors as well as the organizers.